Welcome to this video. This is linear versus nonlinear equations. We're going to talk about how to identify linear equations and nonlinear equations. The linear equations toolkit entry for me is on page 41, but if you have one of the newer toolkits, it's probably uh, a page earlier than that. Look in your table of contents to figure out where this linear equations toolkit entry is. You may have vi visited it recently if you're looking at compare functions or linear relationships. A linear equation is an equation, right here in the beginning, is an equation that forms a line when it's graphed. And a good way to remember that is the word linear starts with line. So you're looking for something that's forming a line, as you see here when we graph it. Often you'll see linear equations in standard form, that is the form ax plus by equals c, where we replace a, b, and c with different numbers. Another common form that we'll actually use most often in this class is our slope intercept form. They call it y equals mx plus b here, form, but it is called slope intercept form. Such that y equals mx plus b will be written where m and b are replaced with numbers. Where m is my slope and b is my y-intercept. Right? And you can look more at that when you look at compare functions and linear relationships. I get more into the details of those parts of the equation. Here I just want to identify that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at different characteristics. And I wrote my separate toolkit entry on just the page right before that one where I really look at the difference between linear and nonlinear. You can pause the video to record this on your own and then come back to the video and start it up again. All right, now if you're back with me, let's identify some of the things that linear equations do not have. Linear equations do not have exponents on the variables. There's no exponents on the variables. Here we have an x squared that makes it nonlinear. Here there's an x cubed and an x squared making it nonlinear. Here there's a square root of x. The square root of x could be rewritten as x to the 1 half, a fractional exponent. And then finally, here x is an exponent itself. All right, so exponents do not make it linear when the exponent involves the variable, whether the variable itself is an exponent or whether there's an exponent on the variable. Those are all going to be nonlinear situations. So you got to look for that. Second thing is there's no variables. I'm looking right here. There's no variables in the denominator. Here, x is in the denominator. That's the bottom of the fraction. All right, we're seeing it there. It could be y as well that's in the denominator. It doesn't matter. No variable can be in the denominator for a linear equation. Next up, we've got no variables multiplied by each other. You will see no xy's all right, or anything like that where you're taking one variable multiplied by another. So those are the things that you're looking for. If you see one of those, it's nonlinear. All right. If you don't see those, it is linear. All right. And as I said before, typically we will find these in standard form like this, slope intercept form with examples, or even vertical form where you've got just x equals the number. That's not slope intercept form. But notice the equation x equals 2. There's no exponent on the x. The x is not in the denominator, and there's no variables multiplied by each other. These are vertical lines. All right. Same thing if it's just y equals. That's a horizontal line and still linear, hence horizontal line. So that's what you're looking for there. Let's try a few examples in Study Island. Study Island starts off by taking a look at some graphs. Notice below we've got some linear equations. It's pretty easy to identify a linear equation on a graph because it is a line, as long as you remember that linear means line. And nonlinear ones, well, they curve. I, I know some people will say, oh, it has to be a straight line. No, all lines are straight. All right. If it doesn't form a straight line, straight lines, that's like if it's not a straight line, it's not straight. It's not a line. If it's not straight. And as we look at this, we've got a curve here. This is a nice parabola down here, but that is not a line. And this is what you'd get if you had x cubed. So it's again showing that that exponent, this is an x squared. It's showing that when the exponent is on that variable, you get something that's nonlinear. Well, let's take a look at a few examples down below here. Example number one. Is the equation above linear or nonlinear? We'll take a look at the equation. Do you see any exponents on your variables? No. Any variables in the denominator? No. Any variables being multiplied by the variables? No. In fact, this is slope intercept form. That is linear. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. We've got now all of a sudden y equals 2 to the x power plus 1. Do you have exponents uh, with a variable? Yeah, I've got an, I got my variable as an exponent, so nonlinear. All right. Taking a look at the very next one, example number three. Now we've got y equals x squared plus one. Once again, I've got that exponent on my variable. You cannot have that in a linear equation, so this is going to be nonlinear. 
Now we step it up a notch and we take a look at some tables. And if we're looking at a table to determine if something is linear or nonlinear in a table, all lines, in order to have a line, they have a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change. That is the slope that you can calculate. So if I look at this, I look at how x is changing every single time. You've got to look at all of them. You can't assume that it's going to be the same for all of them. We've got to double check. Here I notice they are adding 1 every single time. Since the x value that we're adding did not change, the y value that we're adding cannot change either. It has to remain constant. As we look here, we're adding 4. As we look here, we're adding 4, adding 4, and adding 4. So it is a linear equation. Let me show you something here that I just want to point out. What if the next one was 6 and the one beneath it, all right, if the next one was 6 and the one beneath it was 27? Well, now up top, instead of jumping 1, we jumped 2. But on bottom, instead of jumping 4, we jumped 8. We're still being consistent because although we didn't show 5 in our table where it would have been 5 and 23, all right, we didn't show that piece. We jumped up to the next one. We jumped two ahead. And that's okay. If you make a bigger jump up top, you have to make an equally bigger jump on the bottom. Notice our jump up top was twice as big. The jump on the bottom was twice as big. And the way you can really tell is to just write your slope. Change in y over change in x. Notice my change in y for most of the jumps before was 4 over my change in x was 1. For the last one, it was a jump of 8 over 2. Well, all of these simplify down to 4. They're the same thing. They're the same value, and that's why it is linear. All right, so it's a constant rate of change there. Let's take a look at the next one. So why don't you pause now and try and, try and figure out the same way I did, if it's linear or nonlinear. All right, coming back in. If you did pause and you noticed the bolded answer down there, you might have you know, been given away a little bit. But let's just see why. Notice here, we're going up 1, up 1, up 1, up 1. So the bottom's got to be doing the same thing. I'm going down 3, down 3. It has to be consistent the whole way, down 3, and down 3. Since the top was consistent the whole way, the bottom has to be consistent the whole way, and therefore we have a linear relationship. All right, let's keep moving on here. Now we're taking a look at some word problem situations. Does the following situation represent a linear or nonlinear relationship? A certain vine grows by two inches each month. Two inches each month is your key. That means my slope is two inches per one month. All right, in other words, a growth of two. That is a constant rate of change. It's going to grow by two every single time. Since it's a constant rate of change, linear. All right, the next one. Does the following situation, uh, situation represent a linear or nonlinear relationship? The value of the card decreases by one-tenth each year after it is sold. All right, since it's decreasing by one-tenth, all right, one-tenth of the value the first time, let's just say an example would be $1,000. We're just going to go with a really cheap car at this point. All right, but let's say that it's $1,000. Well, if we divide that by 10, all right, it means it's now going to be uh, decreasing by $100 that first time. So now it's going to be worth $90. The next time, one-tenth of 90, uh, $900 all right, is going to be 90 And notice now we decreased by a fewer amount, and now it's going to be worth 810 I didn't decrease by 100 each time. I had to recalculate that one-tenth each time, and so therefore it was going to be a nonlinear equation, and that's what we're dealing with there. This is nonlinear. It's not decreasing by the same amount each time. It's decreasing by a certain percentage of that amount each time, making it nonlinear. Let me just end by talking about my own relationship uh, that you'll see as a challenge question. What about a zombie apocalypse? All right, if you had a zombie apocalypse, well, you start off with one zombie, all right, and that zombie is going to infect someone else, all right, uh, and then that zombie, let's say, well, let's say it infects two people, you know, whatever it is, but then those zombies, they're going to go ahead and they're going to infect two other people of their own, all right, and they'll infect them, and then this zombie will infect two other people of their own, 
And this zombie will still infect two other people. It's not like once that first zombie infected, it's two people, it's done. No, it's gonna be keep going. Even if you do it by one person at a time. You've got a zombie here. I'm just gonna do it as a table-wise. All right, we have one zombie, there's one infected. Then when you get two zombies, all right, in stage two or day two, well, that one zombie infected someone else, and so now there's gonna be two people. And then three zombies, well, then those two people are gonna each infect someone, you'll be up to four. And then day three, or sorry, day four of the apocalypse, all right, so these are all our days here coming across. And this is our zombies. Day four, those four people are gonna infect eight. And day five, those eight are gonna infect 16. And so it's doubling each time, all right? It's multiplying by two each time, but that is not a constant rate, all right? Multiplying by two is not the same. We're looking at adding the same amount. Well, the first time it added one. The next time it added two. The next time it added four. And notice that's not a constant rate. A zombie apocalypse would definitely not be a constant rate. In fact, it's an exponential rate, which is what makes it so scary, all right? Because it could get so quickly out of hand. All right, I hope that all helps. Good luck.